everyone, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. I don't know how many of you are watching because I'm not looking at the comments at the minute. Something's just occurred to me. I was looking on YouTube and a couple of news streams came up and it involved this man here, uh, ex-Royal Guard. Uh, his name's Paul Page. And, uh, well, I think this is gonna speak for itself. What are the chances that this person I'm about to show you is connected to Prince Andrew yet again. Not only working for the Queen directly in communications at Buckingham Palace, but the man now that is bringing us the information about Prince Andrew and that he was dating Ghislaine, the man that's gonna show you, who I'm gonna show you in a minute, bringing you an interview with this man, Paul Page, a couple of years back. What are the chances of Ian Puddick being connected to this bloke who's now in the New York Post news all around the world as an inside man to Prince Andrew? And Ian Puddick is interviewing him. Check it out. Hi, my name's Ian Puddick. Um, I've been exposing police corruption uh, for many, many years. I have a website, policeexpenses.co.uk, which the counter-terrorism police prosecuted before and lost. Um, and I've just been tackling the issue of police accountability since I was brutalised in custody. The CCTV was wiped to the police station and the officers all had amnesia. Well, I remembered. So, you know, I've just been interested. I've had a very strict upbringing. I always believe the police were the good guys, the baddies were the baddies. I didn't believe the police could misbehave. Uh, and they do misbehave. Um, why do they misbehave? Because they can. So we're just making a very short series of videos called the Police Whistleblowers. And we're starting with Paul Page. Uh, and Paul Page has got a very, very interesting story to tell. Ex-Royal uh, Protection uh, Police at uh, Buckingham Palace. Um, I won't say any more, I'll let Paul um, take the um, first video away. Um, so if you just want to tell us, Paul, you know, you got in trouble, you, you know, you got in a lot of trouble. Uh, do you want to tell us about that? Just yeah. so that the viewer just gets some context about what's happened. Okay, um, I, I spent many years in the Royal Protection Department um, from 1998 to 2004, I think it was. <clears throat> Basically, I got myself in, uh, involved in a fraud, investment fraud. I created, I put my hands up, um, it started off as Did it start uh, off as a fraud? No, 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 but it's like anything. I mean, if anyone's ever uh, been involved in the stock market, it, some people call it the devil's casino because it basically can suck you in, uh, suck you dry and spit you out. You know. Do you still believe this man's a plumber? Who is this man? Who is he? Ian Puddick, Mossad. Also to do with a national crime agency. Can you believe this? Everyone, can you fucking believe this? I mean, this is all over the news. This is everywhere. This is them again. Hi, my name's Ian Puddick. Um, I've been exposing police again. corruption uh, for many, many years. I have a website, policeexpenses.co.uk, which the counter-terrorism police prosecuted before and lost. Right, hang on a second. Right, now let me just go back to Google here in case you ever doubted it. Here we have it. Tweet, Ian Puddick, breaking. My interview with pa Paul Page, Royal Protection Officer, Buckingham Palace. Now we know Puddick worked for the Queen. Yeah? Right, Puddick's still talking about police corruption and, and all the rest of it. And then even this copper, this guy, this ex, this ex Royal Protection Officer, He's even coming out and saying he was involved in a fraud. I mean, I'm, I, I don't know why, but I'm thinking of people like Chris Fay again. Oh, he was done for fraud. You, you know what I mean? Why is Puddick interviewing this bloke? Why is Puddick in the middle of everything to do with Prince Andrew? You know why. So let's just confirm it again by just playing you a little bit more of this interview and ask yourself why this geezer is buying me equipment to film a bloke who was going to accuse Prince Andrew. Now he's interviewing Royal Protection Officer and this was some time ago. This was when Brian Hurl started knocking on my door. This was exactly around then, so this is a couple of years old. He's always in there and he up front. Ask yourself why. 
Hi, my name's Ian Puddick. Um, I've been exposing police corruption uh, for many, many years. I have a website, policeexpenses.co.uk, which the counter-terrorism police prosecuted before and lost. Um, and I've just been tackling the issue of police accountability since I was brutalised in custody. The CCTV was wiped to the police station and the officers all had amnesia. Well, I remembered. So, you know, I've just been interested. I've had a very strict upbringing. I always believe the police were the good guys, the baddies were the baddies. I didn't believe the police could misbehave. Uh, and they do misbehave. Um, why do they misbehave? Because they can. So we're just making a very short series of videos called the Police Whistleblowers. And we're starting with Paul Page. Uh, and Paul Page has got a very, very interesting story to tell. He's making a series of videos on what? Police whistleblowers. Who's the police whistleblower that's connected to Ian Puddick already? And Ian Puddick's best mate, Bill Maloney, that he won't, I won't say anything bad about Bill. John Wedger. And John Wedger and Ian Puddick have both got the Sean Atwood podcast in common. Yeah? This is a little network of intelligence officers, not much intelligence, I'll give you that, who are targeting real victims of abuse and trying to stop them from, come forward, from coming forward. And the other thing that they're doing is they are spin doctors for the royals and the higher ups. That's clear to me. Where is Andrew Ash, Ian? Why are you in the middle of this all the time with Prince Andrew, Sidney Cook, Tom Watkins? What is going on? Do not let this man get away with this, this time. Ex-Royal uh, Protection uh, Police at uh, Buckingham Palace. Um, I won't say any more, I'll let Paul um, take the um, first video away. Uh Yeah, of course he won't fucking say anymore. Because they know each other from fucking Buckingham Palace. Yeah? Um, so if you just want to tell us... What is he doing buying me equipment and getting the guy to accuse Prince Andrew so I can go out there and get it wrong? These people are damage limitation for the royals. If Puddick is involved with this Paul Page who has now gone worldwide with his news about Prince Andrew and his fucking teddy bears... Sounds like that Norcross bloke to me with his teddy bears. Yeah? Private joke there. But, um, what is Puddick doing right up in the middle of it all again? Where's Bill Maloney, Puddick? Where's John Wedger who does food drops for Camilla Batman Jelly and rooftop surveillance to watch certain events happening? He's always on a rooftop, isn't he, John Wedger? Brew with a view. Took me up on a rooftop when we shot the invisible video with Bill Maloney and he had three kids with him. But are your kids John or was that another drop? Paul. Fucking police whistleblower, yeah? If this one's anything like John Wedger, well, this one's gone round the world and it's in the mainstream news. New York Post? Has that got something to do with Murdoch? Because he's your friend as well, isn't he, Ian? Carry on. You know, you got in trouble. You, you know, you got in a lot of trouble. Uh, do you want to tell us about that? Just yeah. so that the viewer just gets some context about what's happened. Okay. Um, I, I spent many years in the Royal Protection Department um, from 1998 to 2004, I think it was. <clears throat> Basically, I got myself in, uh, involved in a fraud, investment fraud. I created, I put my hands up. Um, it started off as. Did it start uh, off as a fraud? No, no, but it's like anything. I mean, if anyone's ever. Uh, been involved in the stock market. It, some people call it the devil's casino because it basically can suck you in, uh, suck you dry, and then spit you out. You know, I got a, a six-year prison sentence for fraud, um, and, and I've, I've said openly that you know I'm sorry for what happened. And, and do you have to register that business with the police, or do you just do it all on the, on the sly on the quiet? No, that, How does that, it work? That um, the company that I created, United Land and Property Developments, that was uh, I registered that with the police with a job it had to be authorised by the police. So they knew about it? They knew about it, yeah. Um, but initially it didn't start off as a fraud but it ended up as one. Yeah, no, I realise that. As the chain of events went on, um, as I say, you know, and the six year sentence. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, no. 
the show today. <sighs> You've been requesting it. It's David Icke. <sighs> and David, well, in my book. So, um, um, in my books, in my books. So I thought I'd bring up this old video here, right? And if we go through it. Let's just keep going now. Murdoch and his tentacles at the center of everything. Every cover up. Let me just play you from back here. Maybe down a, down, a, down a certain path because he is in with people like, and I know you probably know this guy, and I know David does, and I know everyone knows everyone. But this Ian Puddick, he's not a plumber, he's counterintelligence, MI5, he's, like he's someone, mate, he's someone. And, right, and, and for the past three years, all he's been doing to me is showing me his power and his connections. Michael Portillo, you know, advertising his gin. You know, he's sitting on, 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 on uh, a UK column with Brian Gerrish. You know, Brian Gerrish and Lou Collins are partnered up. You know, when I went round to Bill Maloney's flat one day, Ben Fellows is supposed to be missing, but Lou Collins can ring him. You know, everyone knows now. I see what's going on in there, and it's ridiculous. You know, that is not a truth movement that is going on over there. And for someone like me to, to come walking in and see it all, this is just like a repeat of the of the of the commercial industry that I've just been in, but in just as dark in another way. Do you know what, Brian? If you were, if I was in the same room with you now, I'd fucking kiss you, miss. Not talking today, Daddy. Hello, today I'm here with our first citizen activist exposing police corruption. Right, first, first point now. He had to make a point out of, Hello, this is our first citizen. He's not a citizen. It's in the first fucking line. He's not a citizen. Yeah. He's more than that. And no friend of Brian Harvey. <laughs> His name is Ian Puddick. Brian who? <laughs> 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 Brian Harvey situation. So <laughs> clear it up. What? Well, go to the oh, yeah, website called www.policeexpenses.co.uk. Yeah, policeexpenses.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> what? Brought that <laughs> Okay. How long have you got? Um, I'll give you a very brief overview. And then Two we... hours. Take yeah, time. Okay. okay. Um, so it all starts off with a domestic affair. Uh, literally. Um, I would not be taking... taking this ...called Kroll. Kroll of the world's largest private detective force security agency. Right, what I want to point out here is that Jimmy Jones, what you can see here, right, a message I got from Jimmy Jones, who runs the Outlaw blog. And it's funny that the Outlaw blog, both Andrew Ash and Carl Beach, first turn up there. And Jimmy Jones, after talking to him, said to me, he got this random message, a text message, so if it was a text, the numbers with it, he's trying to tell me it's anonymous. That's bullshit. They are going to kill Brian Harvey for speaking out. The Tim Wood thing decided it. Shame, but he knew the risks and he will be made to write a suicide note. Right? On the Jimmy Jones blog. And this is all be apparently because I spoke to Tim Wood from Xaro News who used to work for the News of the World and who admits as soon as he comes into my house, he knows Puddick. He had to because I dug this out. Story about Ian Puddick, Kroll, all his fucking fake story and it's done by Tim Wood. Back in Ian's Guy Carpenter, Kroll, police corruption, someone slept with my wife, getting done for harassment, malicious communications, Bullshit. They try to frighten you at every fucking level. If it's not 
John Harris is dead, the ex trufer free man on the land, and Puddick going to his funeral, he's interviewing Paul Page. When he's not interviewing Paul Page, he's funding pop stars' equipment to go and film fake Fernbridge witnesses so that I can go out there and get myself in a lot of trouble. But the question is, why? It's got something to do with Sidney Cook because you've brought him up in the conversation many times or got Andrew to or Bill to, right? I remember writing to Bill first of all and telling him I got one of that gang living next door to me. That's why you pulled me into your little crew because Sidney Cook is connected to Tom Watkins and I ain't going to say how right now, but he is. He is, and you know. And that's why you started throwing red errands in Andrew's testimony to me and Mick and the cabin interview started throwing red errands in there didn't you for Tom because you know him and Sidney Cook and all these dirty little accomplices and everything that leads back to the red rooms and Prince Andrew you're up in the fucking middle of it every fucking time here you are again won't want to have to explain sending Bill Maloney and and do I was working for the New me. World Order why are you listening just, just okay there you go Sean all right we'll skip the ad we'll skip the ad there you go uh, that's real that's just before real, the end there real police corruption uh, oh my god mine's a walk in the park Ooh, let's get some Ryan Harvey <laughs> It was about a year or so ago, people started saying to me, this guy called Brian Harvey's making videos about you. Right, mm -hmm. And I watched the videos, and this guy just ranting about me. Yeah. Coherent, incoherent. Effing like, Sean Atwood, effing John Wedge, effing yes. Ian Paddock, effing... Yeah. Who's the other guy he's got it in for? Loads, there's loads. Um, yeah, sure. uh, yourself, Bill, something. Bill Maloney. Bill Maloney. Bill Maloney. Bill Maloney. Effing Bill Maloney. Bill Maloney. Bill Maloney. Bill Maloney. Have a look what Puddy got someone to copy his account and do. I was working for the New me. World Order. Why are you listening Just to trying. these? <laughs> and so I thought, all right, who is this guy? I'm gonna Google him. I saw that he was a famous huge. in a famous yeah. band. Yeah, huge. huge. E17. Yeah, massive. Yes. And um, E16. He'd run over himself or something. Get yeah, right. <laughs> It's, 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 it's it's really so I thought, having lived with people who suffered, <laughs> seen the suffering of, of people with addiction issues and mental health issues, I thought, oh, really I'm not, not talking to their daddy. Yeah, I've got mental health issues, drug addiction issues. Look what this geezer does to so-called victims. It's a good job I know she's not really a victim and she's just another one of your NCA agents. Yeah? Is this what you do, yeah? To the people you interview? Yeah? This is what you do. And you got you think you can criticise me? You lot are just fucked yourselves, yeah? I hope you realise that. You have fucked yourselves. I'll tell you what, I've found out the bigger picture. Yeah? And it ain't fucking good. Because he's talented, he's really talented. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. talented. Look at a mock him, yeah, because he's talented, he's really talented. These people like to play mind games, yeah? <laughs> but why if the hell? Is he... energy, if he put his energy. Oh, my into, energy. And I, and I think, and I, I had a conversation with I don't him need energy in, because like, Sonia Paul and I've in given Jan you energy. Yeah. I gave you energy, Brian. I've given you, I've given you energy. Do you mean energy? Sonia, my fucking life! Sonia, my life's in danger, mate! I'm fine, thanks. I've got a top up from Sonia. I had a conversation with him because he accuses me of all sorts of nonsense. Yeah, it's not nonsense, though, is it, Ian? That's the thing. It's not nonsense. And everyone can see it. Um, I, uh, I'll just stop that there a second. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute, hang on. Oh, hold up. I'm going to have to get some more of that, mate. Just hold on a minute. Just hold on. Right, let's just stop him there. Does that look like nonsense? Does that look like nonsense to you? The police never moved on it. He said, I've been sectioned under the Mental Health Act 2015. No one ever took his computers. 
You know why? Because it wasn't police that took my computers. And malicious communication is a load of fucking bollocks that nothing ever comes of. Yeah? It's bungle. It's to frighten you out of free speech online. It's to frighten victims out of saying what happened to them and how they really feel. It's scare tactics. And this same fucking shit with Prince Andrew just going on that and all the same fucking people involved. But nothing comes of that Virginia Dufre case and the press start turning on her and Ghislaine Maxwell gets a mistrial because three victims didn't mention that they'd been abused. That was the random circumstance I fucking told you was gonna happen. And it's fucking happened. There's gonna have to be a retrial if them victims who say they're victims, they're not. This is all fucking fear. Oh, this is a plan. It's a fucking plan. And then on the way back round, Ghislaine's gonna come and help Andrew. Cause she's gonna get fucking exonerated. Cause she's Mossad. She was never going away. But they've had to make it look good. But she was never in prison. Cause they showed us fucking drawings. And she doesn't turn up on Andrew's list. Funny enough, Epstein does. Prince Andrew does. But this is all part of the, they've got you judging Andrew already. You're right about him, yeah? But you're gonna feel bad at the end cause they're gonna turn it all around. Right, and this is how they're gonna do it. Exonerate Ghislaine. She's gonna come back round. The Andy's dirtiness now is just gonna come down to oh, no one knew he was fucking Ghislaine. Bullshit. Bullshit. She was in and out of the fucking palace. You know, if we take Paul Page's fucking story, ex-police whistleblower, what makes him any different to John Wedger? Paul Page has already said he's corrupt. He was involved in fraud. Well, you can't listen to him then, really, can you? This whole thing is a fucking mess. Ian had my computers taken because he thought I was calling him names. Here he's informed the public that a public figure, yes, believe it or not, whether you like me or not, or you think I'm a cunt, I'm still a public figure, and everyone does know who I am. I think I've earned that place in life with 22 million records sold. And this fucking toss pot thinks he can go around telling people that I've been sectioned. He quickly took it down the next morning and the police have got it. So let's just back up a little bit and just have a look at this while you hear him talk. If we can do that. Is that right? I'm going to drink my coffee. And his brother Alistair, who, who I know well, um, has campaigned for this, uh, campaigned for, oh, you know, for some justice. Um, and it has slowly, it came out during the Leveson report. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know, we're talking about people, people's lives. You've got, we've got a poor... Yeah, my poor life as well, you can't. His family's lives are in tatters. Yeah. Um, that's, real, that's real, real police corruption. Yeah, my life's real. in tatters, you can't. How about that? Oh, my God. That's Mine's fucking real. Park the person he's talking about, anybody. Alistair Morgan, now. So, yeah. I don't know when it was, about a year or so ago, people okay. started saying to me, this guy called Brian Harvey's making videos about you. Right, you said... And I watched the videos, and this guy just ranting about me. Yeah. Just effing Sean Atwood, effing John Wedge, effing Ian Paddock, effing... Who's the other guy he's got it in for? Loads, there's loads. Um, yeah, Sean, uh, yourself. Bill something. Bill Maloney. Bill, Bill Maloney. Maloney. Bill, Bill Maloney. Maloney. Bill Maloney. Effing Bill <gasps> Maloney this, effing... Sh then he started saying that... I was working for the New World Order. I didn't say New World true. Order. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. And so far, right, right, who is this guy? I'm going to Google him. I saw I'm that he was from. a famous, yeah, in was a famous huge. band. Yeah, huge. huge. I'm very G17. famous, yeah, Sean. Massive. And, um, very massive. He'd run over me. himself Fuck, or might be up. Yeah, I believe so. I've run over myself. I'm so really famous. Sad. Not talking to Big Daddy. Not talking to Big Thanks, Nikki. Having lived with people who suffered, Seeing the suffering of, of people oh, no. with addiction really issues and mental health, health issues, I thought really this was really sad. Not talking to Big Daddy. The public is really talented. Really talented. Yeah, oh, very talented. talented. Yeah. Thanks. But why the hell is he? If he put his energy into, and I, and I think, and I, oh, I had a conversation with him back in, Sonia Polk, I'm fine, thanks. I've given you, I've given you energy. But the end of January, end of January this year, or Feb, beginning of February, <gasps> I had a conversation with him. He accuses me of all sorts of yeah, nonsense. Yeah, I do. I know. I, um, I, I, um, I said nonsense. to him that you know, I believe this is not real. he makes videos not. about him being hacked by News of the World, and and from from what he shows, I think he probably was. I think he probably oh, was. Oh, you!
don't forget that this guy is friends with Neil Wallace, who I've got evidence of hacking me, and he knows Murdoch. I mean, he knows the Queen. This geezer knows everyone. Yeah? So don't let his pretend humbleness fucking fool you. It's your tune. Hold on a minute. Oh, he's, oh, he's changed his tune. I've got... Uh, uh, uh. Anyway. Let's go back to where he's at today. Hi, my name's Ian Puddick. Um, I've been exposing police corruption uh, for many, many years. I have a website, policeexpenses.co.uk, which the counter-terrorism police prosecuted before and lost. Um, and I've just been tackling the issue of police accountability since I was brutalised in custody, the CCTV was wiped to the police station and the officers all had amnesia. Well, I remembered. So, you know, I've just been interested. I've had a very strict upbringing. I always believe the police were the good guys, the baddies were the baddies. I didn't believe the police could misbehave. Uh, and they do misbehave. Um, why do they misbehave? Because they can. So we're just making a very short series of videos called the Police Whistleblowers. And we're starting with Paul Page, uh, and Paul Page has got a very, very interesting story to tell. Ex-Royal uh, Protection uh, Police at uh, Buckingham Palace. Um, I won't say any more. I'll let Paul um, take the um, first video away. Um, so if you just want to tell us, Paul, you know, you got in trouble. You, you know, you got in a lot of trouble. Uh, do you want to tell us about that? Just yeah. so that the viewer just gets some context about what's happened. Okay. Um... I spent many years in the Royal Protection Department um, from 1998 to 2004, I think it was. <clears throat> Basically, I got myself in, uh, involved in a fraud, investment fraud. I created, I put my hands up, um, it started off as Did it start uh, off as a fraud? No, no, but it's like anything. I mean, if anyone's ever uh, been involved in the stock market, it, some people call it the devil's casino because it basically can suck you in. Uh, suck you dry and spit you out. You know, I got a, a six year prison sentence for fraud. Um, uh, and I've, I've said openly that, you know, I'm sorry for what happened. And, and do you have to register that business with the police or do you just do it all on the, on the sly, on the quiet? No, that, How does that, it work? That's um, the company that I created, United Land and Property Developments, that was, uh, I registered that with the, the police with the job. It had to be authorised by the police. So they knew about it? They knew about it, yeah. Um, but initially it didn't start off as a fraud, but it ended up as one. Yeah, no, I realise that. As the chain of events went on, um, as I say, you know, and the six year sentence, um, really, as I've said publicly, it should have been an eight, you know, for what I did. The trust that I breached and the people that I, you know, affected. So you've been arrested, Paul. Yeah. Um, presumably you've been investigated by the Internal Corruption Police. Anti Corruption, anti -corruption Command, yeah. Um, so they've come and, and, and so what did they, any, what did they do? Well. Were they tough, really yeah. robust? And they visited me at my home. Um, it was three detectives, uh, inspector and two sergeants. And um, they basically said to me, look, um, if you resign, most of this will go away. What I wanted to prove and, and for for the Royal Protection Department and Anti-Corruption uh, Department and the uh, prosecution to attempt to discredit what I was saying, but yeah. they never did. Um, you know, like um, officers forging their firearms permits in order to carry on um, carrying a firearm. If we go down the line of, of what I'd said in court, I mean, I'd have really spoken to Mark Gillard about what I knew yeah. before I went to court because I was frightened that it was going to get shut down, which they did try to do. He's written a brilliant, brilliant book about mm. this for Queen and uh, for Queen and Currency. Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic. So, <laughs> even throughout that, where, you know, ex royal protection officer given the chance to speak Paddock can't help giving you cutaways of silly little things in his office I mean I've never known anyone so self-absorbed seriously but why there's serious things being spoken about it's just in it's just so inappropriate the guy he's inappropriate and, and tries to play it like he's a nice guy, and he ain't a nice guy. He ain't a nice guy. Anyway, I've made my point. There he is. He's in the news now. New York Post. 
it's all over the internet pushing some story about Andrew and cuddly toys and if they're not stacked in the right order that the shit hit the fan and that there's a laminate picture of exactly where each teddy bear is supposed to go I mean what are we man what the fuck are we it's ridiculous anyway that's all for tonight people take care more to come soon Good night.